And for our last example, let's take a look at a quotient rule application with some trig functions. Well, we notice uh, there is a sort of straightforward quotient rule application, but then at the denominator, we have this other, uh, other product rule. So it's sort of like the last example, but in reverse order. So let's set up the quotient rule first. If our u equals sine of x, and our v equals cosine x times x squared plus tangent of x, well, we can say that our du dx equals, well, that's cosine of x, and our dv dx equals, well, we have to sort of apply the product rule first, so we'll come back to that, uh, and we'll just leave the term as dv dx. So let's find the derivative of f of x. f prime of x equals derivative of u, so du dx cosine of x times the bottom portion, cosine of x times x squared plus tangent of x minus dv dx, which we don't know yet, so we'll just plug in dv dx times uh, the top portion u, which is sine of x. And that all gets divided by cosine of x times x squared plus tangent of x squared. So now we're all we're left to do with is to find this dv dx term, which we can find dv dx. Well, let's say our a equals cosine of x, our b equals x squared plus tangent of x. So by applying the product rule, we know that um, the derivative of v equals derivative of a, which is negative sine of x, times the second portion, b, plus a times the derivative of b, which we can apply with a trig definition of derivatives and the power rule. So 2x plus whatever the derivative of tangent of x is. And if we can remember, that's secant squared of x. So then we just take this expression and plug it in right here. So once again, we can multiply everything out or realize that we have to plug in a pi term. So we just do it directly. And after a, quite a bit of arithmetic, uh, we should arrive at the conclusion that the answer is 1 over pi squared. So we've looked at a few examples of the quotient rule, some of which are very straightforward and simplistic, but others require another rule, like this example, where uh, we're using the product rule in conjunction with the quotient rule. And it does get a little more complicated, but as long as we stick to the rules and their definitions, uh, we should be able to solve any type of problem. So thanks for watching educator.com. See you in the next section.